Hey guys, how you doing? Coming at you from Section 8, but we're not going to work on Section 8 today. Today we're doing ZR1 stuff, but I am in Section 8 because I need something from Section 8, aka my 14 GT500 for sale, by the way. Um, I need the N-Gage cable. Now, if you guys know anything about what's going on with N-Gage, uh, N-Gage pretty much is out of business. Um, not because of lack of sales, because I think government went in there and started saying, no, no, you you cannot make any devices and they basically shut them down i need the draggy for the corvette so what i'm going to do is what I, i'm going to attempt to do anyway is i'm going to attempt to data log the corvette with the lund racing n gauge there's me with the gopro so i think i can watch or see parameters live with the lund racing n gauge without having to marry it to the car i remember when i had my genesis i was able to data log it or at least see what's going on with the data so because i've had a rash of bad cables um with my uh end gauges i have three and five end gauges three cables have failed and i can't find the other one so i'm hoping this is one of those old cables that was made before the new batch and i'm hoping that it can actually work so i'm gonna take it out of here head over to the zr1 and start seeing if i can data log things like in the air temperature blow a temperature spark knock whatever the car can spit out then i'm gonna do 60 to 130 again it is still hot but what i want to do is i want to look at some data i'm going to put the gopro on the window and because i can't i don't have a configuration file to data log it with i'm going to see if i can log with the screen or look at it on replay with the gopro and see what it's doing for iat2 iat spark knock sensor and then I'm gonna put race gas in it. That's right, bone stock tune. And I'm gonna see if Chevy adopted the adaptive octane logic, similar to what Mustangs have in it now. I'm sure they do, but I wanna see what the knock sensors do with regular 93 pump gas from Florida, which isn't great. And with Sunoco 260 GT, I'm gonna head up to Stewart, drive it up there, fill it up with very expensive Sunoco 260 GT and see if it runs any better 60 to 130. The goal is to get it into the sevens uh, stock in this heat. I don't think I'm going to wait three or four months before I stop modding this car. So I said, let me just get it into the sevens stock in 95 plus degree heat with race gas. If the knock sensors add timing and we'll see if we can get that done today. So let me try to get this cable out of here and we'll head over to the Corvette and start seeing what kind of data I can get it to spit out on the N-Gage. All right. Very successful. Whoever put it in did a really good job of making it easily accessible. S197s just have um, a lot less bullshit to deal with. What's up, brother? They have a lot less bullshit to deal with when it comes to underneath the dash. Underneath the dash, like on the S550, is like complex as fuck compared to um, an S197. So let's get this guy out because I have to find the OVD2 port. I'm sure it's buried underneath there because, I mean, or it could be super easy. Look, I, I, you, we're doing this together. I have no idea where what is on this car. We're learning together. I'm not reaching out on forums. I'm just going to learn it as I go. If I have something I really have to look up, I'll look it up on the forums and stuff. But for now, I'm going to get the OBD2 hooked up and see what kind of data the N-Gage spits out. This sucker is really low to the ground, so I'm going to do my best to <laughs> find the OBD2 port. Where are you? Let me see. Oh, wow. Okay, it's not where... I'm expecting it to be. Let me see if it's like tucked up under the dash. No, that's a that's a, that's a chintzy light. Whatever. No. No. What is this? Oh, this is for the radio. It goes for the steering wheel controls. Uh. Shit. Am I gonna have to look up on the forums where the fuck the OBD2 port is in this thing? <laughs> There's wires here. Shitload of wires. What's going on here? Yeah. Huh. all right let me oh here it is got it boop right here you can't really see it because there's no light but it's kind of loosey-goosey in there bro is that normal well we'll see all right let me get the engage on it all right got the obd2 hooked up let me uh start it up whoop e-brake's a little loose let's see what kind of data it spits out if any might say found new model or something like that so we're gonna go gauges connect on new model okay to continue english yep 
and it should say something about Chevy Generic or something like that. I've seen them before. Ford Gas, 08 and up. GM All, let's see if there's anything else. Ford All, Demo Data, OBD All, Ford Diesel All, Ford Pre-08 All, 08 and up. GM All, Ford All. Okay, so let's go to GM All. Pretty slick if I can get it to read IET2, intake air temp, spark, all that stuff. Scan complete, found 109 signals. Nice, nice, nice. Let's scroll. Whatever the fuck that is. 600 RPM. Okay, it's reading boost. Really? Oh, yes, this has a map sensor, so. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm looking for IET2. Oh, look at that. Boost, engine coolant temp. IAT2, IAT, whatever the fuck that is. So I'm going to see if I can find knock sensor because I believe these things have a knock sensor. I or maybe not. Oh, here we go. Knock, total knock spark retard. Maximum knock fast spark retard. It's pretty retarded. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll do total knock spark retard. Beautiful. So we got boost, engine coolant temp, inlet air temp, blower temp knock um let's do rpm here do, 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 do. whoa really wait a minute <laughs> no i think it just has it but i don't think it's active engine oil temperature from the sensor that's wrong engine oil pressure oh you get oil pressure cool fuel rail pressure very nice that it has a fuel rail pressure sensor we got that we got that load calculated engine load but we got boost so that's interesting load absolute long term short term math remember chevy guys there is a math on this car most of y'all ignore it um mass sensor e frequency very good map we already got map i'm looking for rpm just just so that when i put the gopro or phone up to it um that you can see the rpm versus boost okay this is where i ended up we got boost top left IAT2 blower temp to the right, spark advance, IAT knock, and RPM. I think that's more than enough usable data. So I'm gonna try to mount this in such a way where I can mount the GoPro like right here. I'm not gonna be data logging with it. Actually, if I hit this, boom, well, it's say data log. Display return to round gauge and start log. Okay, so if I start log, Logging with gauges is disabled. Lawn racing logs must be done by, okay, so cannot do that. So let me return. So we're just gonna have to put the GoPro or phone, whichever has the better camera up against it. Let's do a 16 to 130. Let's see what it does. And then we'll review the video and then put some, two, some, two, uh, some Sunoco 260 GT in it. Do another 16 to 130, relatively close to the station. Um, or I'm gonna let it cool down. I'm gonna give it the best shot possible. Record that. And we'll see if there is any kind of knock advance, like uh, depending on octane. Yeah, I'm, look, I hope it is. This is a hundred thousand dollar vehicle. I hope at the time in 2009 that they had uh, some pretty advanced stuff going on there. Hey, it has knock sensors. Doesn't have wide bands. That's all good. But enough talking. Let's do 60 to 130 as it sits. We'll see what the data uh, looks like, and then we'll uh, go ahead to put some better fuel in it and see what the data looks like after that. So I hope this will be adequate. So bear with me while I set everything up because I want to make sure that I get the proper shot. See, hit gauges pointed this way. I want to make sure that everything looks as good as possible and I'm going to try to get the camera even closer if I have to. So it looks like the camera needs to be a lot closer to see the data. So let's move it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. I have a bunch of mounts. I invested over 300 bucks in mounts because I want to get the shot that I think would best suit what I'm trying to do here. There we go. Okay, so undo this guy, twist it. All right, let me get back to it and uh, get you the final result. So as you can see, blower temperature is 118. I want to say ambient temp is about what, 90, 91 or so? 90 or so degrees outside. Um, cruising at 40 degrees, normal. Boost, uh, there's a cup in front of me, so I'm not gonna get into boost. But the cold air, AKA inlet air temperature is at 100. So it's about right. Typically between IAT and IAT2, there's about a 15 or so degree difference. Um, we'll see how bad it heat soaks. I don't think it heat soaks as bad as a lot of people say it does. But um, yeah, we'll get some logs in and we'll see what it looks like.
Okay, I put seven gallons of Shell 93, uh, $5.09 in the car. I'm gonna go test it nearby, Guadalajara. Good, good area, Guadalajara. They seem to have like English signs out in Guadalajara, but uh, never mind. Let's go out there, get a 60 to 130 with the uh, pump gas set up, log it, or at least video it as good as I can with the GoPro and the N-Gage, and we'll see what it runs, then go get some Tunoco 260 GT and relog it with that. back at the scene of the crime you guys know the place the uh to sunoco 260 gt gas pump in uh don't worry i won't get you on camera <laughs> in uh stewart stewart florida so i'm gonna get i put uh 70 bucks so it's got a little over a half tank of um 93 from shell so i suspect that i'm not gonna have a 100 octane obviously mix in here i'm thinking it's gonna be more along the lines of 96 97 or so but yeah 70 bucks it's gonna be seven gallons because it's 10 bucks a gallon which is not that far off from joe biden's prices uh so might as well go all out and get it in all right so we're gonna do the same thing go back out there do a 60 to 130 but again guys i don't care about the 60 to 130 time i have a passenger in the car it's gonna have a full tank of gas i am not looking to be in the sevens we can wait for the cool weather to come because it is 95 okay 95 the purpose of the test mostly was to take a look at what the N gauge was spitting out for data. And I wanted to see if the car saw any more timing. I peeked over and it looked like it had 22 degrees of timing at nine and a half PSI, almost 10 PSI. So it's not a lot of boost. It's barely 10 PSI with a low compression motor, but it is still a 6.2, so it's no slouch. All right, we got $70 in there. Ooh, I cheated a little bit. They're gonna report me to Byron. And uh, we'll go out there and do another 6130. IATs are fine. Everyone was complaining online about IATs. Everyone thought IATs were going to be a big deal. And honestly, they're not. They're not. It's it's in the 120 range. And unless Chevy is pulling timing on 120 IAT2 blower temps, I'd be blown away by that. But let's see if it sees any more timing than 22 degrees. And um, see if it betters the 8, 9. 60 to 130 again guys it's hot i'm gonna look in a better the time and make it badass this is all about gathering data on the end gauge Okay, so let me review some of the video and see what kind of timing this thing saw. Uh, let's focus, focus, focus. Okay, so when it goes wide open throttle, it'll say 9 PSI. Boom. What? 23, 24 degrees. Look at that. 8, uh, 23, 22. And around the shift, it sees about 23. So it sees like one more degree of timing with Sunoco 260 GT than it did um, pump gas. Let me see if I can pause it. Come on, pause it and then go back to this way. One more. That one, I think it's the pump gas one. Let's take a look. This is pump gas. No, it's about the same. So it didn't really make that big of a difference. Obviously air load makes a difference look at iat or top right is in the air temps 127 126 
Let me see what it did on the Sunoco 260 GT. This is this is no Samsung, I'll tell you that much. Let me see what the IETs did, because maybe that's where the power came in, because it went almost fucking two, uh, four tenths quicker. So maybe the IET was the biggest difference. Yep, so the IAT was the biggest difference. I ended up in a, ah, uh, it's up there. It's still in the 120s. So yeah, IATs are similar. Maybe just the actual properties of the fuel is what allowed it to make more power. Okay, so there you have it. I thought they were pretty decent tests in my opinion. Um, nothing definitive, nothing that told me that the knock sensors are adding timing, nothing that told me that it saw more timing on Tsunoko 260 GT. If it went four tenths quicker, it's probably conditions, road conditions, or the traction control settings didn't interrupt that much. So it's not really one of those tests that is a big aha moment, but the fact that I'm able to data log this vehicle with a Lund Racing N-Gage makes my life a lot easier. Now I don't have to wonder what it's spitting out. I don't have to buy specialty equipment uh, to have it display on the heads-up display. I can just use a Lund Racing N-Gage with the GM signals and I can see what's happening. So I thought, you know, maybe I can do a test similar to what I do with the white car where I see what the knock sensors add. But the white car has had a tune in it from the get-go. I've never tested anything like this on a bone stock vehicle and this time today was my opportunity to actually data log this car with a Lund Racing N-Gage just to see what it's going to do in stock form and it's been in the 8483 range the whole time so I mean it's not terrible it is 95 degrees I had a passenger in a full tank of gas I have no doubt this thing can get into the 760 to 130. All I have to do is actually wait till it cools down but by that time I would have already had a pulley because it only, only makes nine and a half psi peak I would have had a pulley, heat exchanger, uh, a tune, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and maybe long tube headers in the next couple of months. Or if by some crazy coincidence, we get a nice cool day outside, I can go ahead and get you 60 to 130 and see if I can get into the seven stock. I think I can. It's just, a, you saw what the truck did. The truck did two tenths uh, quicker six, uh, in the quarter mile in NA. So a boosted car with cool air coming in is only gonna do uh, better. All right, guys, I'm gonna upload some of these videos, get your sights, sounds, draggy, and uh, some of the, this video where I'm shifting and I just showed you, it actually sounds really good. You can hear the blower whine in the car, and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this video. Not a lot of people are doing that. Not a lot of people are showing you actual data on a ZR1 bone stock with verifiable signals coming from the OBD2 port. Most are just putting wheels on and shit like that. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a different flavor, and we'll grow together with this car, and we'll make it a badass 800 horsepower street car in a very short time, in my opinion. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.